Hello, I am Luis Nuño. I am a professor in the area of signal theory and communications at the Polytechnic University of Valencia in Spain. Now I am going to explain the Bela Bartok axis system. One of the disciples of Bela Bartok, called Erno Lenbay, performed an exhaustive analysis of the music of Bela Bartok, and he found several interesting things such as golden ratios between the length of several excerpts as well as in number of notes. He also found a special a, a system of axes which says that if we are in the C major key, for example, the chords with the tonic harmonic function are not only C major but also those chords obtained by looking for parallel and relative chords. So starting with C major we find the parallel C minor, the relative chords A minor and E flat major, the parallel of these two chords A major and E flat minor and the relatives or these last chords F sharp minor and G flat major or F sharp major. We can represent these eight chords on a cycle of fifths as we can see here, and we observe two axes, the primary axis with chords C major minor and F sharp major and minor, and the secondary axis with chords A major and minor and chords E flat major and minor. We can repeat the process for the dominant and subdominant chords. If we start with dominant chord G major, we look for parallel and relative chords and we found we find G minor, then the relative chords E minor and B flat major, the parallel of these chords E major and B flat minor, and the relatives of these last chords which are C sharp minor and D flat major or C sharp major. If we represent these chords, they are eight on a cycle of fifths, we again obtain two axis. Here we can see that in the primary axis we have G major and D flat major. D flat major is the tritone substitute for G major, also known as the Neapolitan sixth chord in C major. If we repeat the process for the subdominant chord which is F major, we find it's parallel F minor the relative chords D minor and A flat major, its parallel chords D major and A flat minor, and the relatives of, of these last chords B minor and C flat major or B major. We can represent these eight chords on a cycle of fifths as well. And we again find two axes. Therefore, in each key, we started with C major key, but we can start with any other key. In each key, we can classify the 24 major and minor chords into three groups of eight chords each. A group with eight, eight chords having a tonic function, which will be called group T. Another group with eight chords having a dominant harmonic function, which will be called group D and eight chords with subdominant harmonic function, which will be called group S. If we represent this sequence, subdominant, tonic, dominant, on a cycle of fifths, we will find this subdominant, F, tonic, C, dominant, G, and then the same sequence, S, T, D, S, T, D, S, T, D, S, T, D, and again S. In this representation, on a cycle of fifths, the eight chords making up a group are placed 90 degrees apart, that is, they are separated as much as possible. However, since they have the same harmonic function, there should exist an alternative representation where these chords appear grouped, that is, next to each other. This is what occurs on the harmonic wheel where each of these groups takes up a circular sector. Here we have the harmonic wheel, 
In this group, which is a circular sector, we have the C major call, call and in the same group we find its relative A minor, the parallel A major, its relative F sharp minor, we continue from the bottom, the parallel F sharp major, etc. So this is the group of tonic. In this other group, we have the G major chord, which is the dominant, as well as its relative chord E minor, the parallel E major, the relative C sharp minor, we continue here, the C sharp major, etc. So this is the group of eight chords with dominant harmonic function. Here in this other circular sector, we find the F major chord as well as its relative D minor, the parallel D major, the relative B minor, we continue here, its parallel B major, etc. So these eight chords form the group of subdominant function. As we know, the dominant chords tend to resolve to the tonic chords, that is the group on its left. In the same way, this group of tonic chords will tend to resolve to the group on its left, that is the subdominant group. And which is the group on the left of the subdominant group? We can see that in that group we find again the G major chord as well as its relative parallel, etc. So this is again a dominant group. So we conclude that the subdominant chords tend to resolve to the dominant chords. This way we complete the cycle of resolution of harmonic functions which states that the dominant chords resolve to the tonic chords, the tonic chords resolve to the subdominant chords and the subdominant chords resolve to the dominant chords as we can see in this graph. Conclusions for any given key, the Bella Bartok's axis system allows us to classify the 24 major and minor chords into three groups of eight chords each. One group with the tonic harmonic function, another group with the dominant harmonic function, and the other group with the subdominant harmonic function. The eight chords in each group are found by looking for relative and parallel chords from a starting chord. The representation of these groups on the harmonic wheel is really simple. Each of them takes up a circular sector. You can find all the information on the webpage harmonicwheel.com. Thank you very much for your attention.